Hello everyone, and welcome to the second video tutorial on Spitfire LF Mark 9. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you taxi, take off, and land the Spitfire. Now, it should be noted that while most procedures are by the book, there are a few that I took liberty with that worked best for me. Before we get started, let's make sure the oil pressure gauge is between 30 and 60. Let's also make sure the coolant gauge is no less than 60 Celsius and no more than 120 Celsius. Here are some important gauges we'll use. The engine boost indicator, the engine RPM indicator, the airspeed indicator in miles per hour, and the altimeter in feet. This is a pneumatics indicator, and we're going to run up the engine to test the brakes. We're going to set the engine RPM to 1800 now. Looks good, and I'll bring the throttle back down and then release the brake. We're ready to taxi now, so I'm going to go ahead and set my RPM to 1500 to have the aircraft start moving from a standstill. To execute turns on the ground, press and hold the wheel brake lever on the flight stick while simultaneously giving rudder input in the direction of the desired turn. This will apply brake pressure to the corresponding main wheels to allow you to turn. We'll need to carefully modulate engine power between idle and 1500. While taxiing, try to perform S-turns to best view the area ahead of you. While we're taxiing, please also remember that this video is based on a work-in-progress version and it may differ from the released product. As I'm approaching the runway, I'm also scanning the sky looking for any air traffic. Be careful not to taxi too fast, or a sharp turn could result in a dipped wing. There's no air traffic, so I'll go ahead and take the active runway. I'll line up on the runway center line to help align the tailwheel. Once lined up, I'll bring her to a stop. Let's go ahead and close the canopy now. This is the elevator trim indicator. Now technically, this should be set to one unit nose down for takeoff, but for me, I prefer it at the center position. The rudder trim knob should be set to one full rotation to the right, but I prefer just a little bit. Pull the stick all the way back for takeoff. Gradually increase throttle for a boost of plus eight. Use small inputs on the rudder to keep you aligned down the runway. As you gain speed, allow the stick to go to neutral. At about 90 to 95 miles per hour, the aircraft will take off. Maintain climb with an RPM of about 3,000 and a boost of plus 8. At 140 miles per hour, retract the landing gear. Once the landing gear has been retracted, as indicated by the up on the landing gear panel, decrease engine RPM to about 2800 and increase boost to about plus 12. Set your pitch attitude about 180 miles per hour, which is your optimal climb speed.
We're now in an optimum climb out configuration. So let's go ahead and skip to the landing phase. Rather than a general pattern, I'm actually going to do a real Spitfire approach based on feedback from real Spitfire pilots. I have an RPM around 2600 and a boost around plus six or so. I'm lining up the runway and we'll over a flight between 100 and 200 feet. I want my airspeed over the runway between 260 and 280 miles per hour. At midfield, I'm going to pitch up and to the left. At 90 degrees through the turn, I'll reduce my boost to plus two. I'll now roll out on the downward leg at about 1,000 feet. Being below 160 miles per hour, I'll go ahead and drop my landing gear. Once my left wingtip is a beam of the runway threshold, I'll start into the base leg with a descending turn while dropping my flaps. The base leg needs to be a continuous descending turn into the runway threshold. You should be able to maintain sight on the runway threshold during the entire turn. Your airspeed should also be decreasing such that you hit the runway threshold at 90 miles per hour. Smooth and careful inputs are needed here to line yourself up. Once rolled out, use a trickle of throttle and attitude to adjust your airspeed. Begin your flare for a three-point landing at about 60 to 70 miles per hour. Once on the ground, lightly dance on the rudders to keep you down the center of the runway. As you slow to the point where the rudder is ineffective, start using your wheel brakes. Once at a stop, go ahead and raise your flaps. And this concludes this early look at how you taxi, take off, and land in the Spitfire LF Mark 9.